Kolmogorov's continuity criteria give us a computationally feasible way to construct continuous path processes. But they actually, with a little bit of help, do even better than that. They also give us tightness. Recall, tightness is a property for a sequence or a family of probability measures defined on a common measure metric space. A sequence of probability measures is called tight if, for each epsilon greater than zero, there is some compact subset of the probability space, k epsilon, such that for all of the probability measures in the family, the measure of the complement of that compact set is less than epsilon. There are uniform tail bounds for the whole family of probability measures. Tightness played an important role in our discussion of weak convergence, particularly in Prochorov's theorem, which will raise its head again shortly. And so it behooves us to ask, now that we're thinking about probability measures on path space, that is the laws of continuous stochastic processes, when can we be assured that a sequence of such measures, a sequence of continuous stochastic processes, is tight? Well, the first question we need to answer in that regard is, since our probability space that we're going to be dealing with here is the path space, what do compact subsets of the path space look like? Unfortunately, that is a question that was answered in your undergraduate analysis course through the arzela ascoli theorem. The arzela ascoli theorem is usually phrased in terms of continuous real-valued function spaces on a compact interval, but in fact, the proof works exactly the same way if the state space for those paths is any metric space that has the heine borel property, that is, a metric space in which closed and bounded sets are compact. The arzela ascoli theorem states that if S is a complete metric space with this heine borel property, then a subset K of the path space over S, as usual equipped with the supmetric, is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded and satisfies one additional property, equicontinuity. So let's be very precise about all three of those statements. Closed is the usual notion of closed in any metric space. Bounded here, well, we could take it to mean bounded in this metric, which would be uniformly bounded, but we can even be a little more generous with that. You only need the sets to be pointwise bounded, and then it will follow that it is uniformly bounded if it is compact. But pointwise bounded here just means that there exists a function, beta from the interval into the positive reals, such that the distance from say some fixed base point x naught in the metric space to omega of s is less than or equal to beta of s for all s in that interval. And then we require this equicontinuity. The set k of paths is equicontinuous if there is a uniform modulus of continuity at any point for the whole family. That is to say, for any base point t naught in the time interval domain, and any path in the family and any tolerance epsilon, there is a delta, which can depend on the base point and of course on epsilon, but does not depend on omega. It's a uniform over the whole family k, such that if s and that base point are less than delta units apart, then the distance of their images are less than epsilon units apart. Now, frequently, the stronger notion of uniform equicontinuity comes into play, which means that this delta also doesn't even depend on what base point you start at. And that's the case that we'll be in today. We will be working with uniformly bounded and uniformly equicontinuous sets, which are, by the arzela ascoli theorem, compact if they are closed. And let's look at the precise example that will be useful to us. Suppose we fix some bound n, which will be an integer, but it doesn't matter for us, just some finite number, and some parameter alpha greater than zero. Let W be a set of paths, which satisfies the following conditions. All of the paths omega in W are alpha holder continuous with holder norm no bigger than N. And moreover, suppose that the starting points of those paths 
are in the n radius ball centered at some point. That is, the starting points are all in some compact subset of this Heine Borel metric space S. Then that set W is uniformly equicontinuous and uniformly bounded. And let's just check that. For uniform equicontinuity, we need to find a common delta that works for all S and T and all omega in the path space. And we can just take that delta to be epsilon over n to the power one over alpha. Because for all s and t in the time domain, if s minus t is less than that delta, that implies that the distance in the metric space between their images, well, first of all, in this set, that's always less than or equal to this. But since s minus t is less than delta, that is therefore less than n times delta to the alpha, and we've constructed our delta so that n times delta to the alpha is epsilon. So there we have uniform equicontinuity for this set, and it similarly is going to be uniformly bounded. Now, that does not follow from the uniform holder continuity. It also requires something like this. That's where that comes into play, because for every path omega in our set w, and every time t in the time domain, if I look at the distance from the base point that we chose to the path at time t, well, that by the triangle inequality is less than or equal to the distance from the base point to the path at its starting time, plus the distance from the path at its starting time to the path at the time t. By assumption, that first term is less than or equal to n, and the second term by the Hilder continuity is less than or equal to n times t minus 0 to the alpha. But t is less than or equal to 1, and so that term is also less than or equal to n. So this is less than or equal to 2n. And therefore, we get a uniform bound of twice the Hilder bound n. Now, let me make one quick comment here. It's a very easy exercise to see that the closure in the supmetric d infinity of an equicontinuous or pointwise bounded set is also equicontinuous or pointwise bounded. It's even easier to see that's true for uniformly equicontinuous and uniformly bounded sets. And so what that means is that we could restate the arzela ascoli theorem in the slightly stronger sounding form that a set K is pre-compact, meaning that it has compact closure, if and only if it is equicontinuous and pointwise bounded. In particular, what that means here is that if I have any such set W here that satisfies these conditions here, then the closure of that set is compact. Now that brings us to tightness. We know what compact sets in our new path space probability space look like, so we can talk about tightness in terms of having uniform tail bounds over an increasing family of compact sets in the probability space. And it turns out, thanks to this lemma here, that the very same criteria that guarantee continuity, together with tightness for the laws of the starting points of the process, will guarantee tightness for a sequence of stochastic processes. Here, we'll refer to that as Kolmogorov's tightness criteria. If S is a complete metric space with the Heine Borel property, and if I have a sequence Xn of continuous stochastic processes, in other words, I have a sequence of probability measures on path space. Suppose that the Kolmogorov continuity criteria hold for all of these processes uniformly. That is, there is a fixed epsilon and a constant c and a fixed parameter p bigger than or equal to 1 plus epsilon, such that for all n, the LP norm of the distance between xn of s and xn of t is bounded by that constant times s minus t to the 1 plus epsilon. And further, suppose that the collection of random variables xn at the starting point is uniformly bounded with high probability, which is just another funny way of saying that it is tight. In the original probability space where these random variables are defined. Now, we can be very precise about that here to say that it's bounded is to talk about balls, so the 
distance in the metric space between xn at its starting time and some fixed base point that we're interested in. We want that to be bounded with high probability. In other words, the probability that it is not within a particular ball of radius n, that should be small. So the probability of that supremum over the sequence xn should tend to zero as that bound capital N goes to infinity. Here we're talking about the event that the starting points do not lie in the ball of radius n centered at x0, which, thanks to this heine borel property, is a compact set, which is why this is the same criteria as insisting that this family of random variables has tight laws. So those are the conditions here of the Kolmogorov tightness criteria. And if those hold, if we have the continuity criteria holding uniformly and tightness for the initial points of the stochastic process, then in fact, the family of laws of all those stochastic processes is a tight sequence of probability measures on the path space. To prove that, we're going to use the nice computational way to estimate the holder continuity constant k from the behavior of our process on dyadic rationals. Remember that for each integer little k, this random variable delta k associated to a path omega was the maximum distance of the image of the path on subsequent times 1 over 2 to the k units apart in the dyadic rationals. And then k alpha was defined to be the scaled sum of all of those scaled by this exponentially increasing sequence with an overall factor of 2 to the 1 plus alpha out front. This was the random variable that played an important role in the continuity criteria because we showed that under the continuity criteria holding, this is an LP random variable and is therefore finite almost surely, and it also is an upper bound for the alpha holder continuity constant for the path omega. As before, we will then define k alpha of the process xn to be k alpha of the path t maps to xn of t for whatever outcome omega we're interested in. We proved in the lecture on Kolmogorov's continuity criteria that for any alpha between 0 and epsilon over p, this random variable here is actually in LP. And moreover, this is important, we estimated its LP norm. The LP norm to the pth power of that random variable is less than or equal to this constant here. And the key point is that our assumption in the theorem here is that the epsilon and the p and the c are uniform. They don't depend on the n here in this sequence of stochastic processes. So let's let that uniform bound be denoted by m. And that is finite here. Well, now for any alpha in that interval here where this is an LP random variable, let's define the following set. Omega of n and alpha for any integer n is going to be the set of all paths for which this random variable is less than or equal to n and for which the path's initial point lies in the closed ball of radius n centered at the fixed base point from the beginning. We'd like to show that these will form our compact subsets for the tightness criteria, and that's almost true. Critically, let's note that the law of the process xn, pn, assigns probability to the complement of this set as follows. This is the probability that xn is not in wn alpha, now, by the definition of Wn alpha here, what that means is that this is the probability that either that random variable k alpha of xn is bigger than n, or the starting point of the process xn is outside the ball of radius n centered at x0. We'll use subadditivity of probability measures here to bound that above by the sum of these two probabilities. Now, this second term here, which depends on little n, is of course less than or equal to the supremum over all m of the same quantity. And one of the assumptions in the theorem is that that goes to zero 
as capital N goes to infinity. On the other hand, this probability here, we're going to estimate that by Markov's inequality. The probability of that is less than or equal to 1 over n to the p times the expected value of k alpha of xn to the p. But the expected value of k alpha of xn to the p is uniformly in n bounded above by m. So this is less than or equal to m over n to the p, and that also goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So what we see is that the supremum of these probabilities over all n on this fixed set here does get arbitrarily small as n grows, which means that if these wn alphas were compact sets, we would have proved tightness. Are they compact? Well, in the lemma preceding this theorem, we showed that these conditions here define a set to be uniformly equicontinuous and uniformly bounded. So this set is uniformly bounded and uniformly equicontinuous, which means that it has compact closure by the arzela ascoli theorem. Now that doesn't mean that it's compact, and we don't know whether this set is closed or not. In fact, trying to prove that it's closed would require some very delicate estimates involving this delta. But we don't need to do that because we can just take kn alpha to be the closure of that set, which by the arzela ascoli theorem is compact. Now notice that the set Wn alpha is of course contained in its own closure. And therefore the complement of that closure is contained in the complement of W. And that tells us that the Pn probability of this complement is less than or equal to the Pn probability of the complement of W. That's true for every n, and so the supremum over n of this is less than or equal to the supremum over n of that. But we just finished proving that that goes to zero as n goes to infinity. And so since these are closures of uniformly equicontinuous and bounded sets by the lemma and arzela ascoli theorem, these are compact, and this supremum tends to zero as capital N goes to infinity, which means for each epsilon, we'll be able to find a large enough N so that this compact set does have probability very close to one uniformly over the whole family of laws of our stochastic process, which is to say that these laws form a tight sequence as claimed.